Hi everyone, we are here in Manchester, hot off a plane. We were both in Aberdeen last night. What an atmosphere that was when Big John rocked the joint. It, he really did, yeah. The Premier League has been fantastic this year. And I, do you know, I've got to say, the contenders has really worked. I, I was on board straight away, I've got to say. And this is nothing to do with anyone that has been left out. I just think that the nine players and putting in the contenders, to be honest, how hey, you call Glenn Durrant a uh, contender, I don't know. How hey, you call now Nathan Aspinall a uh, contender, I don't know. But anyway, uh, yeah, Hendo was magnificent. But I'll tell you what, it really has worked because from start to finish, which it finished was like last night, obviously, uh, Chris Doby coming and get, gets a draw against Mensur Sulevic and the way Luke Humphreys play, Glenn Durrant averaged nine on 100. Uh, Steve Lennon was like three nil up against uh, Peter Wright, and last night we, we we saw we saw Hendo take the game, take the game to to Michael Van Gerwen. They have been a revelation. But what it proves, forget about forget about those that have played. There are a lot more good players similar to them, like them, that thinking I can do that, I can do that. Well, do you know what? It's worked so well so far. They might be doing you a favour. If you think that you can do it, maybe next year the format's the same. Maybe next year it's nine regular players in, within the league season and a contender every week. And if you do get a chance, which I, I know there's a few that think they, they possibly deserved it anyway, that maybe they, they, they'll be able to take it just like the guys have so far. It's been, it's been a roaring success. I was about to ask you on that. Have they created a problem that, uh, that no one anticipated happening? I didn't anticipate it, yes. Have they created it? Oh yeah, you better believe it, yeah. I, I believe that it's going to be difficult, very difficult for the, the Sky Sports, that's whose idea it was by the way, uh, and the PDC to say, no, it didn't work, we'll leave it. Well, so far it's worked. We're five weeks in and it's worked. Unless it goes really pear-shaped in the next few weeks, then can they drop it? Can they? I don't think so. As well, last, last night, Raymond van Barnevard rooted to the bottom of the table. I think I commented that it's like a fine jag with 200,000 on the clock. Is it time? I, I, I've been talking to Raymond. I, I've got, I'm close with him. I, I, I kind of talk darts a, a lot to him, whether it be equipment or, or, or what's left of his, his career. Uh, Raymond is he's not playing well. He's not playing well and he knows it. He feels under pressure. He told me that personally. And I think it's horrible to see someone that's been so good for so long to now look and act beaten. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I would love to see him get a win from somewhere. For, I would hate for him to go through this Premier League and not have a, a, a victory. I think it would be not unfair on him. Do you only... You only get what you deserve sometimes. He hasn't played well. He's nicked a couple of draws, to be fair. He's not really deserved to win a game. Uh, I, I just want to see him win a game. I'm, I'm really disappointed for him. And a lot of people said that he didn't deserve to be in in the first place. Well, I don't really care what, what people are saying. It's the fact that the man's a five-time world champ. This is his last year on the circuit. He'll be playing one more world championship. Uh, I think he deserved the right as a, as a previous winner as, as an eight-time uh, playoff participant, if you like, that's how many times he's qualified, it's incredible. Only Phil Taylor's done it more. Uh, I, I think he deserved the right to, to have a one last, one last hurrah. At the moment, it's not really a hurrah, it's more of a see you, which is a bit of a shame. Well, you touched on Nathan Aspinall, first PDC televised title, get the word in while others will get told off. Great success for the young man, he, and he was very conscious if he want, didn't want the World Championship to be a fluke, where we've seen previous players go deep in the world and never repeat that form. Was that a real standout statement at Mindhead from Nathan? I, I thought the way he held himself together was, was superb, and for me it wasn't the final. Uh, I thought he held himself together well in the final, but that wasn't the game for me, because no offence to Rob Cross, he, he, he was spent. He was gone, uh, he was out of puff. You, call, you, you name it uh, where you've, you've lacked energy or it's gone, he had it all. It was the way he dealt with Gerwin Price in that semi-final. He was 8-3 up and absolutely coasting. Gerwin Price then come back the way that we kind of expected because Gerwin Price is playing so well. Or should I say Gerwin? Sorry about that, lazy of me. 
uh, the way the way that that get a win kind of come back was do you know what I'm going to win this game but that leg I'm going to call it that leg that leg where where Price left the 41 and he took out the 1-2-1 Nathan that was a statement to me that yeah you've got some guts you've got some composure and then he won the match in the next leg and then went on to beat Rob Cross we knew he had composure under pressure against Michael Smith in the semi-finals of the Worlds because Michael was averaging 106 over, over seven sets, I think it was, and he was just in front. Nathan Aspinall is here for the, the duration. He's got something, but I, I, I'm so glad that he, he went on to win. It's good to have another winner. Another talking point is obviously Michael Van Gerwen's form. The start of the year, he was unplayable. Let's, let's get that right, he was unplayable. Now, there's a lot of talk around. One, has he switched off? Because we all know he gets bored. When he's beating everyone, he mentally switches off. One, do you think that's happened right now? And two, a lot of talk about his darts, where we see so many players chopping and changing and using new sets, where Michael doesn't. He uses the battered and bruised set. Maybe the weight's gone a little bit. Are they perhaps too light for him now? Uh, first off, about, about Michael's form. Yeah, I, I believe he gets a little complacent. Rather calling it bored, I'll call it complacent. I'm doing you a favour there, Michael. Uh, I believe against Mervyn King, he got he got a little bit complacent against James Wade last week. Yeah, not against Hendo. He didn't get complacent against Hendo. He, he just couldn't finish him off. He was averaging 116 after what six or seven legs. Uh, his form went a little at the end, but Hendo was magnificent. He really was. I don't see a problem there. It, it, Look, he'll pull off wins. He'll get wins. He'll probably win the Premier League. And this little blip that he's going through right now, it'll be a blip. And that's what it'll be, that's what it'll be down to. But as for his darts, it, I'm assuming they're 80% tungsten, 20% nickel, which, which they will have worn somewhat. And they're, they're 23 grams at the, the original weight. They might be 22 and a half now. There's a little bit of wear there. But when you're playing with them all the time, that doesn't matter. They feel nice in his hand and what happens, it's quite odd, it's quite odd that the difference between an 80% tungsten dart with 20% nickel and 90% tungsten and 10% nickel, it's going to sound ridiculous. The 80% feels slightly softer. They're not, of course they're not. They're still, the, 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 the boil or the melting point is still 3,422 degrees. Did you know that? Did you know? Anyway. Uh, they just seem to wear quicker. They really do. And I just think Michael feels comfortable throwing what he's throwing. Uh, he knows they work. And he's professional enough to think, I've won worlds with these. I've won tournaments with these. Why would I change? Maybe some others, Peter Wright, can, can learn lessons from him. James Wade is, is very, very similar may change darts but never changes the, the pattern or the grip of the dart so it, it works for certain people but some need to change and from there obviously very topical at the moment the DRA have published their um, results shall we say in a nice little spreadsheet there's a few controversial ones obviously we won't touch on price because that's now gone to appeal so everyone knows where that is but there's a couple on there one Mickey Mantle's obviously released a statement today saying he's not going to contest it and the other one is the two Australian lads that haven't been suspended for match fixing. With the DRA at the moment, is there no consistency and no guidelines? Because they seem to be punishing people heavily for something and then an absolute criminal offence in match fixing has gone relatively unpunished. Yeah, the, 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 two, the two players that, that uh, it was kind of uh, manipulation of, of a league basis tournament to kick someone, get someone out and yes get yeah so basically they, they've manipulated the situation which is which is kind of match fixing yes that should have been heavily dealt with uh, more heavily dealt with of course it should have uh, that's inconsistent to, to what's gone beforehand other players have been banned and, and there's no consistency with the DRA and I've, I've said this for a long time that they, they they're kind of making up their own rules as they go along now where I've got the problem with Mickey Mansell is the description of what happened. Not playing to the best of his ability. Well, find me a million, find me a million. No, I'm sorry, that's not on. That's not on. I, I really, sorry about that. There was, the, the crowd is amazing. They're, they're just jumping up and down in anticipation of seeing someone else. I, I'm, 
I don't like the wording. You can't, you can't put that. You just can't do that and think that's okay. Look, there's going to be ramifications. And like you said, Mickey Mantle put out a statement. Why did he put out a statement? I'll tell you why. Because the description left it open to interpretation. If the DRA nipped that in the bud with bringing the game into disrepute, that ends it. That ends everything. The description of not playing to the best of his ability, poor. I, I just think that, that's kind of just, just nonsense. I, I thought they did half a job and I, I'm not happy with the DRA at all. But I'm also not happy with the PDPA. They've got to look after the players better. I understand they get representation, but it's got to be quality representation. No point in saying, we're here for you. Oh, we're here, we can help you. No, no. Make sure that you can help them. If there's any stone left unturned because the player doesn't know what to do or, or the, 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 the rigmarole that, that all, this, uh, all this entails, the PDPA should be pointing them in the right direction. Um, I, I just feel the DRA did it, did it wrong. I feel the PDPA could have done more, but I also feel that Mickey Mansell should have taken, or should have taken, sorry, a barrister stroke solicitor in with him. It's almost becoming like a kangaroo court because we all know the appeal process is expensive. So if you've only been fined in Mickey Mansell's case 500 quid, we all know the appeal process is a lot more than that fine. So it's almost they're running shotgun because they can. I think the appeals process is, is an expensive kind of thing to do. And if you, are, if you have been fined 200 for an altercation with another player, but you feel like you're innocent, there is, there is maybe nowhere to go. That's where the PDPA should step in. Guys, I have a problem. I have a problem. I, I want to know what to do. Look, maybe this happens and we don't hear about it. Just maybe. But I, I, I've always felt that the, the Darts Regulation Authority kind of bully players into to, to paying fines. And I don't, I don't like it. I didn't like it back when I played. I don't like it now. But now I'm out of the game, I can say a lot more, see? Oh, freedom of speech is fantastic. So going back to the Premier League, we're five weeks in, Michael isn't top. We've got a very fresh looking top four as we speak. You backed him from the start. Does he still win it? Yeah, I don't, look, Michael Van Gogh is still the best player in the world by, by quite some way. Uh, someone else last night might have buckled more than Michael. I, I, I just believe he wins it. Yeah, he reaches, he, he gets in the top four, whether he finishes first or second. He, he won't finish third or fourth. I, I just don't see it. He's too good, too consistent. But it's, it's exciting. It, it's competitive, which is what we want to see. There's been a couple of times the last few years where he's, he's been nearly beaten to win the league phase. Chizzy was the best one. I think that was what two years ago. Because he had two darts to finish top. Well, yeah, he had a two dark combination. That, that okay, he didn't get a shot. Didn't get a shot. But if he'd got a shot, it, who knows? Who knows? He could have finished top. So Michael's he's streets ahead, but sometimes that complacency comes back and bites him. Like, I don't think anything's changed. It's just that Michael Van Gogh right now is not getting the wins that maybe we expect him to get. Uh, I just think that he's all right. There's 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 no dramas. Is that credit to him, though, the fact that we've set the bar, the bar so high with the standards we expect from him, where averaging 102, everyone would go, oh, that's well played. Well, now we go, oh, is that all? Yeah, yeah I think so. His, his average last year, 2018, was, was 102. This year, it's just, just, just 100, which is, which is poor. Which is poor. It's shocking, actually. You've got to liven up. Uh, I just think we do expect superhuman things from him on a regular basis, and that's just not the way it works. He played brilliantly in some matches this year and has got nothing for it. Sometimes you can route players. You can route players by playing in a mediocre fashion. He's, he just happens to be walking into it right now, but I, I, don't, I don't see a problem. I don't see him buckling, I don't see him fading away and not making the semi-final. I see him being in the final and winning it. And your normal service will be resumed. He'll be the world champion, he'll be the Masters champion, he'll be the Premier League champion. He'll go on to win the match play. He won't win the Grand Prix because he might go away with Daphne and, and, and little Zoe for a week in Dubai. He'll come back and win the Grand Slam, then the world's again. What a life, eh? It's not bad for a year's work, is it? <laughs> Wayne, absolute pleasure, like always, taking time out for us. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Uh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Thanks for having me, guys. Thank you. Thank you.